video, you're gonna learn how to build a worship keyboard rig. I've got David Faltzgraf from sundaysounds.com with me here in the studio, and he's gonna break it down into the simple building blocks of the hardware you're gonna need, the software you're gonna wanna use. He also has some amazing templates you can load into that software to produce all of those amazing modern worship keyboard sounds. And make sure you watch the video to the end because we're gonna be listing off some of our favorite accessories to go along with our keyboard and our computer to really set your worship keyboardist up for success. My name is Jake Goslin with churchfront.com, helping you lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry. David Faltzgraf, he's the founder of sundaysounds.com and we're gonna link his website as well as all of his resources in the description below this video. I especially want you to check out the Sunday Keys template. It works for both Main Stage and Ableton Live. They got a few different options for you if depending on what software you wanna run and what version of Sunday Keys you want to implement. So head over to their website, purchase and download Sunday Keys, and watch the rest of this video so you'll see how you can implement this in a really amazing setup. So before we dive into the details of the hardware and software, David, go ahead and provide a little bit more context for worship leaders, perhaps building a keyboard rig for the very first time for their church. Like, what are the things they should be thinking about? Um, Why would they want to go with this setup instead of getting your typical keyboard workstation? that has lots of built-in sounds. Sure. Why bother using a computer along with a MIDI controller? Yeah, so Jake, thanks for having me. I think um, the biggest consideration that comes to my mind as a worship leader from that perspective is keys players are listening to these albums, the songs that we're trying to cover, and they're hearing these really exciting, sometimes complicated sounds. And I think as worship leaders, we want to empower and have our, our volunteers excited about what they're contributing to the band sonically, right? But with traditional hardware, it can be a pretty daunting task to figure out how to pull these sounds out of the existing gear that you have. So I think a lot of churches are looking to software as the path of least resistance towards a new level of empowerment for your keys player that can also be accomplished with relative simplicity, can be pretty volunteer friendly, but does deliver that caliber of sounds that we're hearing on the songs that we're all covering week in and week out. So when I think about myself as a worship leader who had you know, a limited amount of budget, a limited amount of time to invest in my volunteers, software was super appealing to me because it was something that I could prep at home, something that I could send home to volunteers and really be able to empower people for the first time to actually feel like they were nailing the keys parts that I was asking them to play, not just with the notes, but with the types of sounds themselves. And I think that's really what software can bring to the table that is a lot more difficult, I would say, if you focus on the hardware. And I would also add another huge advantage of software in using Mainstage or Ableton is having access to just these huge libraries of patches where let's say you hear a, a new song by Hillsong come out or Bethel come out and you're like, how, how can I quickly produce that same keyboard sound and tone with our keyboard rig? Well, today you can just download the software in, or the patch into your software, Mainstage or Ableton, to produce that same sound and you don't have to worry about trying to program and guess how the original artist came up with those tones. So give us the basic breakdown of the anatomy of a worship keyboard rig. So there's only three real components. You need a controller that sends data into the computer. So for most of you, that can be the keyboard you have. Then you need a computer that can run the software, creates all the audio, and then you just need a way to get the audio to the soundboard. And there's lots of options for all three of those components, but that's really all you need to get started. Yeah, what I'd like to do for the rest of this video is we'll actually break down for you this specific keyboard rig that we have here. I think it's gonna work great for 95% of churches out there if you wanna build something similar. This is what we're actually building and using for South Fellowship Church uh, tomorrow for the very first time. David actually is gonna be playing keys in my worship band. It's gonna be a whole lot of fun. So you guys could go with a similar setup to this, but know that you can customize some of these options and accessories along the way. You don't have to copy this 100%.
So what's the first component we wanna dive deep into here? So let's start by just talking about the computer that somebody might need to set up a church keys rig. You need a Mac computer to run MainStage, which is what we're gonna be focusing on in this video. MainStage is a software that's only $30, but you do have to have a Mac computer to run it. Uh, if you already have a Mac, there's a pretty good chance that it's powerful enough to run MainStage. If you don't, uh, Apple recently released some really powerful, affordable new options for purchasing a new Mac, and that's actually what we're using today. So what did you pick up for the rig here at the church? Yeah, I picked up a MacBook Air with an M1 chip, and it has 16 gigabytes of RAM, so only slightly upgraded from the 999 base version. I think this one was about $1,200. So these are pretty new models from Apple, but it's about half of the cost of the system we would have told people to buy for a main stage rig a year ago. Mm -hmm. So really it's more affordable to set up this kind of rig than it's ever been because of these new computers from Apple. So that's the first ingredient. You need a computer that's capable of running main stage and that's gonna be powerful enough to do that reliably on stage. And I do wanna know if you're using a PC and you're only a PC person, that's when you'd want to go down the Ableton Live route because that's a cross-platform software. And again, you can refer to the resources that David and his team have at sundaysounds.com for some Ableton Live templates that will produce pretty much all the same sounds. So once you know you have a computer that's up for running the software, you just need to tell the computer what you want it to do. And that's with a MIDI controller or a keyboard. For 99% of churches, you actually already have a MIDI keyboard on stage, you just might not be using it as one. So any modern keyboard that's got built-in sounds is also gonna be able to send MIDI data to a computer. And so rather than using the built-in sounds in the keyboard, it's just functioning as a controller, telling the software, hey, we wanna play these notes for this long at this volume. It's really simple stuff. So you don't have to spend any money at all buying a new controller necessarily, unless that's something that you want to upgrade. So once you know you've got a computer that can run the software, you just need to connect pretty much any keyboard. You probably already got one at your church that's able to connect to the computer either via USB or via a MIDI cable. Both those options, you know, five or 10 bucks and the computer is gonna be able to receive that data. So you don't have to necessarily upgrade or buy a new keyboard to transition to software. If the keyboard that you're using has sounds that you like, you can run them right alongside each other or, or have it set up as a backup, but you don't need to buy something brand new for the controller side of things if you're just starting out. But if you are looking for a brand new MIDI controller, we're gonna list some of David's recommendations down below this video. So once you've got the computer connected to the keyboard and it's generating audio, then the last ingredient is just figuring out how you're gonna connect it to the soundboard. And if you're sort of testing the waters with this sort of rig, you can use the headphone jack on the laptop. That's not a bad way to get started, especially if you're just maybe running it in rehearsal or something. Um, once you commit to this approach, we think it's a great idea to invest in an audio interface of some kind. Essentially, the audio interface is just a, a slightly more robust way to get the audio out of the computer with a clean signal, plenty of headroom, and the types of in and out that you need to send to the soundboard. Yeah, and even potentially, you might want more than just two outputs, like a left and right stereo. Right. Maybe you can map some of your patches or tracks within main stage to a third and fourth output, and then your sound engineer could have some more audio to, to run with, but that's kind of more of a pro level uh, way of doing that. But that really is a great highlight of sort of the, the strength of this approach because you can go very simple in all of these ingredients, and you can add things as you need them or as the position grows at your church. So you could start with a simple mix, you could start with just a keyboard controller, and then you can grow things as you feel the need to for your specific ministry. It really can do exactly what you need it to do for the team that you have. Another pro tip is you can use some other digital audio protocols like Dante or AES50, you could use a USB to AES50 converter um, to get multiple channels of digital audio to your sound console from your keyboard rig. So that could really add some more power and flexibility to your setup. But I just picked up the Radial USB Pro. It has a USB connection on one side that goes into the computer and the computer is gonna see that audio interface connection when I go to the output section of main stage. And then on the other side of the USB Pro, it looks like a DI box. It has two XLR 
output jacks that then send the audio into our stage box, which then goes to the live sound console. So that's actually what you're gonna be hearing here when we demo some of the sounds. That's the exact setup that we have with that interface. We also wanna mention some key accessories for tying this all together. With this particular setup, we're using a CalDigit Thunderbolt dock. It is a bit pricier uh, when it comes to a dongle or a dock, but it's very powerful. It has lots of USB connections. We have one Thunderbolt cable going to the MacBook Air that supplies power as well as receives and sends all of the audio data and MIDI data from the computer. So what's great, in our setup, I wanna be able to plop the computer on the laptop stand and have one plug-in uh, and everything just fires up and is ready to go. So I felt like it was worth the investment in the CalDigit Thunderbolt dock because we saved so much money on the laptop itself. We weren't spending $2,000 on the MacBook Pro. So the keyboard, the nano control, which David is gonna talk about in a moment, the audio interface, um, they all plug directly into the CalDigit dock, and then one Thunderbolt cable connects the dock into the MacBook Air. And I'm a huge fan of going for an all-in-one solution like that because it just reduces the number of failure points in the rig, right? I mean, we've got it sitting on the ground down here and everything is sort of tucked away. It's gonna be very unlikely for somebody to get in there and mess with something or get something unplugged. Mm -hmm. And because it's got its own power source, we're confident the laptop's gonna stay charged. All of the peripherals are gonna get the power that they need. So if you're really serious about going this direction, it makes sense to spend a little bit of money in the peripherals that are gonna glue everything together so that things are reliable. Another accessory I think is worth investing in from the beginning is some sort of controller designed to make things really easy for a volunteer to wrap their head around. You don't wanna expect your volunteers to instantly get really comfortable with the software, like getting into the menus and learning how all the plugins work. Most volunteers aren't gonna dive right into that. So when I was a worship leader, first introducing my teams to main stage, I really emphasized, here's how you can use this as an instrument. So there's all sorts of MIDI controllers that can do that for you, but this is one that I'm a huge fan of that we recommend at Sunday Sounds. It's called the Korg Nano Control 2. It's only 50 or $60, you can get it on Amazon. And essentially it's just a bunch of faders, some knobs and buttons. Uh, and then we have this color-coded decal that we've made uh, that coordinates to our Sunday Keys template. It just gives a volunteer a visual reference for what they're controlling in the moment. So rather than expecting them to get really confident in navigating the software, you say, here are the sounds, here's how you can take control of this and treat it as an instrument. And then they can get pretty comfortable using this really quickly. So this is a great budget-friendly option. It's super portable. You can also travel with this, right? Plug in any keyboard and then just set this on top of it and it's immediately familiar. So if you've got multiple rooms or campuses, this is a great standard to set up for any band that's a part of your church. Another important accessory to remember for your keyboard rig is a keyboard stand. And then here at South Fellowship Church, we also have an old piano that we completely gutted and removed all of the components inside and then we are able to then just plop this MIDI controller in that old upright piano. It looks kind of cool. It's a trendy thing to do these days. And it actually works out well for hiding all of the accessories for the keyboard rig down within the body. So you can always do that, but um, the simple way though is to just Get, get a simple keyboard stand like the one you see here. It's a really good idea to spend a little bit of time wrapping your cables, setting things up so it looks neat, because one, it will make things appear more palatable to your volunteers. If they show up for rehearsal and all of a sudden there's 10 cables where there used to be one, that could be a little intimidating. And I think getting volunteers to understand and buy into why you're doing this is really, really important from the start. The other thing I think is great to do is when you have the time, get all of your keys volunteers together and say, this is how stuff plugs into each other. This is how stuff is connected because you know the weekend that you're out of town on vacation is when the audio interface is gonna get unplugged. And if somebody on your team understands the mechanics of how things connect together, then that's not even a problem. It's really simple, but you do have to understand you're introducing a little bit more complexity here up front. It just takes some more communication to remove that complexity and demystify what you're doing and how it impacts the people on your team. 
So we just unpacked in detail for you the hardware, software, and other accessories you're gonna want for your worship keyboard setup. And before we move on to how to produce amazing sounds in main stage, all I ask is that you smash the like button on this video if you learned something new so far. So moving on to the actual software of MainStage, let's show them what MainStage is like when you open it up for the first time, sure. but with no template like Sunday Keys. Yeah, so MainStage, uh, like the top level of organization is called a concert, and mm -hmm. that's where all your sounds are, and that's where you see like the custom visual that you can make look different ways. It comes with a few out of the box. This is one of them. Um, and it's just got, you know, sort of generic sounds. Uh, the thing about Mainstage is it's, it's not designed for worship music specifically, so you've got some sounds that are really relevant, you've got some sounds that are sort of all over the place. Um, it can take a good bit of time to sort of sift through the sounds and the different visual options to come up with something that makes sense for a worship context, let alone for a volunteer in a worship context. In other words, MainStage is a great value for being only a $30 application. You download it and purchase it from the Apple App Store on your Mac, but it just comes with a lot of things that you don't really need in your worship keyboard library. Yeah, it's a wide open sandbox. There's thousands of patch presets, thousands of sounds, uh, but it takes a bunch of time to wade through that and find stuff that's actually relevant. So when I was starting out with MainStage, I spent hours and hours and hours trying to find good sounds that I could give my volunteers, tried to do that from scratch. It just takes a bunch of time up front. So if you wanna do this yourself, start from scratch in main stage. You just have to be prepared to invest some of your time in finding the right sounds, dialing things in, and then also teaching your volunteers how to use them. So that's where the Sunday Keys template comes in, that the problem it solves is really helping you unleash the power of main stage and saving you a ton of time in producing and navigating these sounds for modern worship music. So even when you just open up the Sunday Keys template for the first time, you can immediately tell that this was designed specifically for a worship ministry context. And then you can also see how the color coding matches up to the Sunday Sounds Nano Control Skin. We've got the piano, we've got the pad, uh, we've got other synth and synth bass, all sorts of fancy things here. So I want you to just show them. I know you're not gonna have time to probably cover everything in this video, but just show us how you've designed Sunday Keys to really make everyone's lives easier. So Sunday Keys really started because I was trying to figure out how to teach my own volunteers how to use main stage and really, I didn't do a very good job of that at first. Really wasn't setting them up for success. But over time figured out some ways to make it easier for a volunteer to approach for the first time. So you mentioned the visual and we found at Sunday Sounds that a uh, reliable, simple visual that just spells everything that's happening out on screen is maybe the, the biggest ingredient that can make your volunteer feel confident in what they can contribute from the keys position. And then on top of that, obviously the sounds is the reason that any church is gonna make this kind of transition, right? So over the last five years now, we've added more and more sounds to Sunday Keys and, and raised the level of uh, what you can do from a worship music standpoint, specifically using main stage. So what this really looks like for people that are kind of starting at the baseline of trying to set up stuff for a volunteer for the first time, is maybe just giving one patch or collection of sounds that has several ingredients they can bring in and out. So I'm gonna use the Nano Control 2 here. This is just a piano and a, and a synth bass. So just a nice, you know, sort of upright piano sound. And then for a, a new volunteer, say, you know what, just move this fader up, and then you're also gonna have a pad. If somebody wants to maybe push things a little more, they could bring in, you know, another pad layer to thicken things up. We always map the mod wheel to the brightness of the sound, so you can bring in some more energy there. And then for this particular patch, we have a lead, sort of the last ingredient in the right hand there, so. So this is all about just giving people a palette of sounds that they can feel really in control of and have the flexibility in the moment 
to be able to flow, to follow, even to cover multiple songs all from a single patch. So Sunday Keys comes with a big library of ready to play layered patches. I'm just switching through them here so you can see all sorts of different ingredients. And this is a great place for a church that's new to main stage to first get comfortable with the software because it's totally accessible to the volunteer. Once you teach them, these are the kinds of sounds you have and this is how you might use them. Then it's pretty intuitive because what you see on screen is what's possible for that patch. And then from there, we've found that many people, worship leaders that are trying to empower volunteers for the first time, they'll find that their volunteers get pretty comfortable with this workflow very quickly. And then they start to see, well, what else can I do here? So Sunday Keys comes with a bunch of ready to play layered patches. And then it also comes with a huge library of individual sounds. So you've got some grand pianos, upright pianos, lots of pads, bass, arps. And many of these sounds are actually custom sounds, meaning that they're not a part of what comes in main stage but they're samples that are actually a part of Sunday Keys itself. So you've got like an upgraded grand piano sound, which is probably the most important instrument you wanna nail for a lot of worship songs. Main stage has built-in pianos, but they just sound sort of okay. Mm -hmm. Takes a lot of work to dial them in. So we actually have custom samples, this own grand piano, upright piano that aren't in main stage itself, but you get with Sunday Keys. And then you're able to, whether you're the worship leader or a volunteer, you can find sounds that you'd like to use for a given song or a set list and then really easily combine them into your own layered patches. So there are some real limits to what main stages built-in sounds can do. And a big part of what we're trying to do with Sunday Keys is deliver brand new custom made sounds that are for worship music specifically. So David is actually gonna be the keys player in my worship band tomorrow morning here at South Fellowship Church. I'm pretty pumped about that. We've got a great team here and I was pretty pumped to be able to select a ton of songs that had some pretty, uh, pretty important keyboard and piano and synth parts to them. So, so now David's gonna go ahead and kind of show you a breakdown of how he prepared like any good keys player should for this worship set list. This was fun because the set list you sent over to me, I actually hadn't played some of these songs before. So I really did get to use main stage, use Sunday keys in the ways that our customers are using it to put this stuff together. So there's four songs in the set list. You just want to really briefly touch on each one. Yeah, we have Only King Forever. It's an opening song, Higher Energy. Yep. And as a worship leader, I'm thinking you're probably going to have more synth driven sounds on this song. Yeah, so for Only King Forever, I used some of the individual sounds in Sunday Keys to build a patch that I felt like would fill the right amount of space. So I've got some kind of meat and potato sounds here. I've got a nice synth pad. I've got a grand piano sound that can kind of just sit in that chord space. Uh, then there's also a really cool arp that kicks in later in the song, and I'm actually going to be able to bring that in at that moment to add that energy at the end. So here, let me just kind of show you how this is going to feel. And I'm using the mod wheel a bunch to control sort of the dynamics of this patch as things build. So this is where I would maybe start. And then by the end. So as this holds out, you can hear I've got a couple of pad layers in there that are just taking up a bunch of space, kind of gluing the band together. And then as we get to the end there, I've got this really cool art. So just with a few sounds, I feel like I'm able to sort of do the original keys parts justice and have the flexibility to follow the band to some extent. Because one thing is, I don't know the people I'm gonna be playing with tomorrow. I, I'm not familiar with the players, I'm not familiar with the room. So as I'm preparing, I wanna have that flexibility to make sure I'm kind of listening to everybody else and filling the right amount of space. And software is awesome for that because you can have stuff available and then have the flexibility to dial it in really quickly during a rehearsal. The next song in the set is Christ Be Magnified, which has that very important piano lick in the instrumentals and the tags during this song. Yeah, so for this one, I actually used uh, a song-specific patch, which we haven't talked about yet. Uh, it's a separate product category from Sunday Keys uh, of patches that we make that are designed to nail all of the keys parts on the original recordings of these songs. So while a Sunday Keys patch might have three, four, or five different sounds, some of these song-specific patches will have 10, 11, or 12 layers, all designed to exactly replicate 
the original keys parts. And the really cool thing about a song specific patch is that with just a single control here on the mod wheel, I can move through all of the different parts of the song really seamlessly. So you mentioned that keys riff, I could start right here. And then I'm gonna skip ahead towards what would be the biggest part of the song, right? So I didn't, I didn't realize, so again, I, you said this, but now I understand what you mean. So the mod wheel is really triggered, was it this one? Yep. That is triggering, oh wow, the different song sections. Yeah. That's insane, sorry, I like, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention well enough, but that is, that is cool, because I was wondering like how you change tones when you take away the, the kind of the layered control like that you usually have, but yep. that is, that's pretty mind blowing. Yeah, so with song specific patches, because there are so many layers, it would be very unruly to try and have individual control and bring layers in and out. So we program everything to a single control. And our goal is that you can feel like you're actually just playing like the most important part of the song. And all these other layers are just sort of filling in automatically around you. So you're able to play the piano or play the lead or whatever, whatever is most important to the song. And then the song patch just adds this extra oomph behind what you're doing. So it's a really natural way to feel like you're playing a, a regular part like you would then all this programming behind the scenes delivers these really cool parts that let you turn the keys off in the track, which is what we love to see at Sunday Sounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's just, again, I wanna just emphasize the convenience of that. Like, it's cool when you can produce all these different tones and sounds with these patches and stuff, but you don't also wanna have to be like doing gymnastics with your hands, like as a keyboard player, or even with your feet trying to trigger things and you yeah. have to think about that. You can actually just focus on being a, mus a musician. We find that people really love having the flexibility of sometimes just having the sort of generic, you know, piano pad, maybe a lead sound that some volunteers will absolutely love. Other times you really wanna just nail all the parts you need you know, just to really fill that space. Being able to have the flexibility to get the best of both worlds is why software is so awesome. The next song that we have in our set list is Come Thou Fount. This is the Worship Initiative arrangement, and it has a bit more of an acoustic vibe to it. It's not such like a, you know, modern worship song with huge big synths or big epic pianos, but more just kind of like a chill acoustic feel. So I'm interested to see how you arrange your sounds for that. Yeah, so for this one, it was really fun because it's in that sort of stripped down living room feel because we were able to use uh, a different piano sound than I've demonstrated so far. I've been mostly with grand pianos, but this one's actually uh, a piano that's custom to Sunday Keys. It's called the Family Piano. This is actually uh, the piano in my mom's house that I learned how to play piano on as a kid. Wow. And then we went back in a couple of years ago and mic'd it up and sampled all the notes and created a virtual version of this piano. So it's just an old, junky, sort of half upright piano that's like really special to me, but it has this really cool sort of soft, upright sound. So it was perfect for this song because it has that really sort of delicate, fragile piano sound. Main stage by itself, all the pianos are really bright, sort of pop oriented. So to have this type of piano sound available is really helpful when you need that more subdued tone. And then there's just a couple other really subtle layers in this one. Um, there's a little string pad underneath that uh, custom sample from an analog synth of mine. That's happening right here. You can hear it as I bring that up, but it's, it's kind of in the background. And then I also have this little kalimba layer. Oh yeah. Uh, it's just adding that little bit of like mechanical attack that you can hear in those really intimate uh, piano recordings. So really I was able to kind of geek out on the sound design for 15 minutes here and say, how can I get that like right at the piano feel? And these layers just really did it. And then uh, lastly, there's just some, uh, some string samples here that we can bring in for the bigger moments. It doesn't get huge, but there's some lift there and we're able to play these strings like a pad. I get to turn off so many backing tracks tomorrow <laughs> with you playing in the band. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs>
Then finally, we have the song Run to the Father. It's definitely more in the modern worship genre. Very big, important piano sounds to it. When I saw this on the set list, I nerded out a little bit because it has this really distinct uh, piano sound, which got really popular in the 80s and 90s. It was like a digital acoustic piano. If you've heard a Michael W. Smith song or a Phil Collins song or any, any pop song produced between the 80s and 90s, it's got that vibe. Um, so we actually went back and, and bought one of those old units and sampled uh, the sounds to get these sounds inside of Sunday keys uh, because it's what's old is new again, right? These, these, these old retro sounds are all over the place. So that's the piano. And then the mod wheel again is able to bring in all of these other layers sort of behind. pad, there's a little bit of synth bass, but I'm still able to just kind of play piano. Like I can nail the riffs, I can vamp, I can follow, you know, wherever you guys are going to go tomorrow, I can do that, but then also have this extra stuff available when I need it. So. This was a really fun one. I'm excited to play it tomorrow. And I love how when they stage, you can actually program in the beats per minute or BPM of a song, the tempo, so that if there is a synth that has a percussive element to it, it'll just be right in line with the, the tracks that we're playing and the click that we're playing to. Yep. And it just sounds awesome. You especially heard that on the uh, Only King Forever patch when you're playing the arpeggiator. So it's really important. Keep, keep the tempo setting in mind as well. So like I said a little while ago, I had only played one of these songs before when you sent the set list over. So it was pretty fun for me to get into these new songs and figure out how I was gonna pull them off. And it just reminded me of, of why Main Stage is so powerful because you're able to really quickly stitch together the transitions. You mentioned the BPM. I'm able to program out the set list and then just really quickly move through all of the changes. So, you know, if everything goes well, if you prepared well, when you're on stage, you can be focused on the music instead of the gear. And that's what I think is really important for a worship leader who's maybe considering moving into the software world is try and make it end up feeling like an instrument again. If it feels like a piece of technology, you're gonna have a hard time getting volunteers to buy in. But if you can make it feel like something expressive and dynamic that they can really connect to in a musical sense. Like just prioritize how easy it is to be musical with the gear. If you can do that, then your volunteers will catch on, I think, and get excited about it. So being able to prep all that out in advance really removes those obstacles, those barriers, so that when it's on stage, the preparation's been done, you're not scrambling to remember what that transition was. It, it all just sort of works. I think one of the things that people can get nervous about with a setup like this is there are uh, multiple different components rather than just one keyboard that sends the sound out to the mixing console. You have a few things that can fail here. So what are perhaps some of the common mistakes you see or the common system failures out there and, and sure. how can we prevent those? The few things that I didn't see coming when I was first moving to a software-based keys rig. I've talked about the first one a little bit. That's just volunteers buying in or not, being intimidated, feeling empowered or not, right? So if you're the worship leader and you're planning on integrating this, I highly recommend ordering a couple pizzas, saying this is the rig, this is how we're gonna use it, we're gonna start here, just breaking down the why behind what you're doing. Because it might feel like a little bit more work or a little bit more responsibility up front. If you can get your volunteers excited about that, then you're setting them up for success. But if you just set it up and say, this is your life now when you're volunteering, some people might love it, other people might think that ah, the old way was so much easier, I, I knew where everything was. So find some time to get buy-in from your volunteers. The second thing that every church has to figure out is sort of a brand new workflow for how you're preparing, right? It's like when you start automating stuff in Ableton Live. Somebody's gotta set that up. Somebody's gotta set up triggers for ProPresenter. That takes effort. When you start doing more complex stuff with your keys patches, you have to figure out who's gonna be doing that work and how you're gonna empower your volunteers with that. So that's why a lot of churches, when they start out with Sunday keys, with main stage, we say stick with a few generic patches and let your whole team get really comfortable with those four or five different sounds so that they become second nature. 
And then you can figure out, all right, who's excited about this? Who wants to take more ownership? That's maybe when you start sending the laptop home with somebody for a while and say, hey, find some cool new sounds. How can you contribute something at a new level of excellence? But you have to start off with this understanding that there might be a little bit more prep work up front for somebody. And if you don't have a plan for who that's going to be, worship leader, it's going to be you. <laughs> so make sure that your capacity is there to either teach somebody on your team to do this work or to come up with a generic way that everybody can interface with it for a while. And then you can always grow and find new sounds over time. You don't have to start out with advanced level sound design programming, just leveling up from one type of pad and piano to two types of pads and pianos is gonna get people on your team excited. It's gonna bring something new sonically to your worship teams. Then the last thing to consider is that with a hardware keyboard that has built-in sounds, all of those have been professionally designed by sound designers to output at around the same volume and the same sort of EQ and all that. When you start moving into software, you are giving yourself or the volunteers on your team more control over the mix. So you wanna make sure that you spend some time figuring out how are we gonna send consistent audio levels, a nice balanced mix of the key sounds to front of house in a way that is easy for everybody to get a grasp on. Because if you're designing your own custom sounds and you're mixing three or four layers together, that might not be as loud as another patch that has more aggressive synth. So it's something that you have to be a little bit more mindful of when you start exploring different types of sounds, different patch combinations. You wanna make sure that somebody is being aware of that. It's not just your audio engineer having to ride the fader up and down from song to song. I think there's a really simple way to do this though. It's just budget five minutes at the beginning of sound check or rehearsal and ask your audio engineer to always say to the keys player, hey, can you play your patches for me. And just say, these are the four patches I have, this is how loud they are. And then invite feedback from front of house and say, this patch is a little bit loud, could you bring it down? This patch is a little bit bright. Really quick feedback can make a huge difference. So if you've got midweek rehearsal or Sunday morning, find the time to do that and then it's gonna make things a lot better during service. What I found is if one of your patches is way louder than the others, you get turned down and you never get turned back up, right? And, we know that volunteers notice when that happens. We wanna set them up for that happening as infrequently as possible. So just a quick addition to the way you do sound check is really all I think you need to make sure that your patches are actually gonna translate well in the room. Well, that concludes this video for building the ultimate worship keyboard rig for a local church context. David, thank you so much. Make sure you check out David's YouTube channel at Sunday Sounds. I'll link it below. Check out their website purchase and download the Sunday Keys template. Also linked below this video and just check out all the resources they have over there at Sunday Sounds. I know I have even more clarity, even though we've talked about this before in the past, <laughs> I learn something new every time. So thanks so much, man, for coming out here, stopping sure. by the studio. Again, leave a like if you learned something new or you appreciated the content in this video today. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry. 